Okay. We're ready for our next Patreon mini campaign. This is a sort of a three-parter. The first part's a little something I threw together. Just a little something something to get us going. The second part is called The Red Wolf by Maggie Harbison and Eris Weidorn. Weidorn? And then the next part is called Verdant Corruption by David Markuski. The Red Wolf. The Red Wolf. <laughs> Does, am I the only one that says wolf? No, you're like not. Elf? I was making fun of Emily. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what? What did I say? I thought I was saying Red wrong. Wolf. Wolf. <laughs> it's a wolf. Wolf. <laughs> wolf. 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 That doesn't wolf. feel right. That does in not Kentucky feel right. We say wolf. Wolf. In Kentucky, we say wolf. <laughs> so it's a wolf. <laughs> There's a wolf on the roof. Wolf on a roof. A roof. <laughs> wolf on a roof. Roof. Are we ready? Whenever you are. Are, are we finished making fun I'm, of my, I'm my accent? I'm confused gamer boy. <laughs> <laughs> After your trip through the fun house and victory over Jack, you decided to take some time off and rest. The people of Little Ivy would gladly pay for your stay at the Curious Beaver Inn and Tavern, and every night a different member of the community buys you dinner and drinks. Pippi got homesick and decided to leave your little group, but while you were there, you met a big, strong, if a little on the simple side, fighter named Mikkel. One evening, while Booch is out strolling in the woods looking for some more spore babies, he finds a man, alive but gravely wounded. There are a series of claw marks scratched deeply into his chest. The man looks up at you and says, Beware the red wolf. Sorry, wolf. No, no. Bad wolf, he gasps. Can I excuse him because he's dying? <laughs> <laughs> Bad and fittich. And he exhales, and he's still. Oh, hey there, little buddy. Uh, are, are you still with me? Hey. Nothing. Hey. Does anyone know how to uh, revive? Hello? Uh, oh, oh boy. He's dead. Uh... I actually do have gentle repose. <laughs> <laughs> it won't work. He is he is that dead. That just preserves dead. his body and stops him from rotting. Right, but then he he could be revived. It basically, is what that's right, used totally. for more yeah, or yeah, less, yeah. right? Uh, do we want to take him back to town? Oh. Mm. No, he's dead. <laughs> yes, we got that, uh, Mikael. Huh? I could preserve him. Um... There's any healer back in town? How Do far his little thing. Uh, he's not worth eating. <laughs> well, uh, uh, you're you're just outside town in the woods. We got to bring him back to his mother. Like his mom might be really missing him, and like he's got a family. People die all the time. Yeah, but family. You've been in this town for a few days. You don't recognize this guy. You've never seen him before. Uh. Let's see if uh, where he came from. Oh, maybe there's a blood trail we can follow back. He is pretty severely wounded. Could I investigate um, his like pockets or if there's anything that might give us any clues on his person? Sure, give me an investigation. That's a, a very diplomatic way of asking if you can rob the corpse. That's us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I forgot to mention I'm looking for clues as well as things of value. <laughs> Take this bag of clues here and put it in my <laughs> golden clues. Uh, that's an eight for investigation. An eight. Okay, well, you can tell that he is wearing leather armor, but it is torn leather armor. He doesn't have anything on him, anything he would have been carrying since he's gravely wounded. He had no energy, no strength left. He's dropped everything. You do find a coin pouch. It has a few silver in it. Aha, a clue. <laughs> and a healing potion that he forgot he oh, had. Oh, he could have used take. that. Yeah, sure. So did he, does he just not have a weapon on him anymore? Like he just kind of like dropped it and, and we find it you, you find a dagger, but it's um, just a small little dagger and, that, and that's it. Nothing else. Yeah. It, it looks like he had a scabbard. Like maybe he had a sword at one point in time. It's not in there. So it's just a standard dagger. There's nothing... Uh... Silverish about it, <laughs> or anything like that. <laughs> I don't know why you would ask that. <laughs> not Jock, not Jock asking. That's for sure. Could I make um, 
I don't know if it'd be a survival check or a nature check or what it would be um, to see if I can tell where he came from, uh, if there's any tracks, that sort of thing. You can. You can also try asking one of the townspeople if they know where Bad and Fifthage is. Bad and Fifthage? Let's take him back to town. I don't feel like digging a grave. There's got to be a grave digger in town. If we must. I'll lean over and grab his leg and sort of throw half of his body over my shoulder and start walking help? back towards town. I have him. He's very light. Ah, uh, Mikkel, you're so strong. Well, uh, now I know. that he is out of uh, the blood, huh? how much does the body's worth of blood weigh? Probably quite a bit. That's why he's so light. <laughs> his blood is all gone? We could bleed out the rest of him. <laughs> no, no, no. Can you repeat that for me, M, the, the location that he said? Bad and Fithich. It's B-A-D space A-N space F-I-T-H-I-C-H. Fifth, that's a hard word. Fit. I know. Fifthich. Fifthich. It's not as hard as wolf. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> no L's. There's no L's. In it. That's why. It's, <laughs> that's why she can do it flawlessly. There's a lot of hard words in the English language. <laughs> Okay, so back to town, and we'll ask about Bad and Fifthage. So, I mean, we would probably ask where, at, like, the keep of where we're staying, right? At the Curious Beaver? Yeah, Curious Beaver in the tavern. And they tell you Bad and Fifthage is about a week's walk away to the north. They don't really know much about it. They've had some trader, traders come in from there, but uh, it's about a week's, week's walk away. I just lay his body on the table in the, in the tavern. <laughs> Hey, I don't want any dead bodies in my tavern. Take that outside. Someone here can manage this. Okay, but you can take it outside. He's mostly bled dry. Out. I feel like we should toast to the man he was. I mean, we we know he was a uh, he was a daggered man with um you know, he was a simple man who forgot health potions and Fought his hardest, and, um, you know, cheers, right? Jacques wipes tears from his eyes. Oh, Pamela! <laughs> that was so beautiful! <laughs> yeah, thank you. We knew so much about him, and I didn't even realize. <laughs> I wish I miss him so very, very much. Grab him by this collar. I sort of pull him off the table and open the door and, and lay him up against the side like he's sitting outside. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we can have birdies them. Just put them just, yeah. uh, we can we, we can have birdies right maybe there by take the them with us then. <laughs> oh my gosh! Please no. <laughs> Cheers to you, bloodless man. Ah, salut. <laughs> May your bravery be never forgotten. We must go to bed in this fifth place. Oh, we must avenge our new friend. I will not rest until his life is avenged. All right, Jack. I'm with you, as always. Next morning, you all start off for Bad and Fithich. It is about a week's walk. Uh, after several days of enjoying the sunshine on your backs and the wind on your faces, you enter a more heavily wooded area. It's darker under the trees and seems more quiet than you would think it would be. Can you give me perception checks? 26 for Pam. 24 for Mikkel. Adjusted 20 for Booch. I got uh, my passive is fourteen. I, so I mean, roll I rolled a ten. Is I rolled a ten. <laughs> my, my passive is fourteen, but I rolled a ten. How does that work? Passive trumps. It doesn't matter because all the rest of you can see up ahead in the road. There's a little bit of an area that looks a little questionable. Not quite right. In what way? Like the actual ground looks. The ground abnormal. has been disturbed, and it doesn't. It looks like there's kind of a piling of leaves where there's in just one little area where there's no leaves anywhere around it. Oh, I've seen one of these before. That there's a trap. From your right, you hear, "Give us your loot." I don't want some music thing. I want their rich stuff. That's what I said. Ow! You didn't have to hit me. Shut up! I'll hit you again. Now. Hand over all your rich stuff or we'll fill you with holes! What are those noises? Do you guys hear something? I think they're trying to do a shake-up, but 
<laughs> they don't sound like the shaken up kind of folks. Ah, boots, I think that is called a shakedown, huh? Hey, you, come out where we can see you! From your left, an arrow flies toward you. It doesn't hit any of you, it hits the ground next to your feet. Roll initiative, please. Uh, I, uh, Jock got a 21. Uh, Booch has a 3. <laughs> Mikkel has a 22. Pam has a 13. Uh, Mikkel, what would you like to do? Do I see these creatures, or do I just hear them? You just hear them right now. Unless you want to give me a perception, uh, or invest, yeah, perception check. That is a 13. You just hear them. Okay, so I'm going to go the direction of the, the sound up to my my uh, overall movement. So I'm going to go north from where I'm standing, 30 feet, and look around as I'm moving to see if I see any kind of anything moving. Maybe see some leaves moving, but you can't tell if it's just the wind blowing or if it's something there. Okay, I'm going to ready my action. If I see anything come out of the bushes or the leaves or anything, I'm going to attack it. If it gets within melee range. Okay. Jacques? Uh, I'm going to follow Mikhail. Kind of. We're not going to go over to where we think the trap thing is. And I'm going to try to trigger it with one of my whips. I'm just going to like try to crack at the leaves or see what the heck it is. I mean, I assume it's a hole because they're talking about throwing some holes, but... <laughs> okay, so you're gonna whip it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me an attack. Uh, 16. Uh, 16, you hit it just hard enough to trigger, and it's like just a little mini avalanche, but it doesn't go very far because the hole was only five foot deep. So it's just a little. Okay. And the, you, there's now a <laughs> somewhat shallow hole in front what of you. What are they trying that to is catch? Three foot by three foot. Sacre bleu, that is a large hole, huh? Just all over here, my so small. <laughs> Thank goodness I did not fall into it, huh? But you were right. <laughs> and uh, that, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Okay, so from, uh, there's a rock off to your north east. I was going to say north right, and that wasn't right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> off to your northeast side, there is a giant boulder off in the, um, off the side of the road. And from there flies an arrow aimed at Mikkel. 21 to hit. That hits. You take three points of piercing damage. Uh, give me a perception. 16. You think you have an idea of where the arrow came from, but you're not entirely sure. You still don't see anything there. Okay. From your west comes another arrow aimed at Jacques. <gasps> No. And it misses you. It just flies right past your face. And funks into a tree. Pam. Uh, guys, you see anything? I do not. There's something up here, though. I can smell them. Um, I'm going to walk up next to Jacques. And then, can I do a perception to see if I see them by the rocks? Sure. Uh, eight. You see rocks and trees and some fallen logs, and that's about it. I guess I'll just, uh, ready my rapier, and if they come to me, you know, have an action ready like, uh, Mikkel did. Okay, an arrow flies from your left, from your west, at you, Pam. Does a 12 hit you? Uh, nope flies right past your face and thunks into the same tree that the previous arrow thunked into. Uh, and then he trips and falls. So this little guy here is now visible. Uh, and he's a little goblin. He, he fell out from behind a tree after he missed his shot. I made too many goblins. Okay, so <laughs> from the north comes another arrow. This time aimed at Mikkel again. And that is a 17. Does that hit you? No. And you kind of have an idea of where that came from, but you're not entirely sure. You just know it's generally from the northwest-ish direction from where you are. Okay. And another arrow at Mikkel also misses, and he stumbles out from behind the tree also. There's another little goblin standing to your north, slightly to your west, Mikkel. So I see that one. 
and a firebolt comes shooting out of Mikkel. Does a 21 hit you, Mikkel? 21 does hit. You take five points of fire damage. Okay. And then, But you don't see where it came from. It came from the general area of the rock, but you don't see anything there. Okay, Mikkel, it is now your turn again. I am going to move towards the one that I see. And he looks like he's about 15, 10. I'll do 15 feet forward. And I'm going to attack him with my long sword. That is an 18 to hit. Yeah, that hits, definitely. Uh, 10 points of damage. So I swing down and, <laughs> and try to take this little guy's head. Yeah, you slice right through his neck and his head goes rolling and his body slumps over. That, then I'm going to move another five feet forward, knowing there is more stuff back behind those rocks somewhere. And can I see anything um, from that vantage point now? Uh, from where you are now, give me a perception check. Eight. No, you see trees and rocks still. There's, as far as you're concerned, there's nothing there. You don't know where this, these uh, things are firing at you from. Okay, I guess I'm done. Jacques. Um, okay, so we've seen this one goblin get decapitated. Yeah, and you see this little guy over here on the left. Ah, hey, look, oh, we are the same. Ah, we are the same. Let's, there's no need for violence. I, uh, and I kind of rubs my back. Look, I have some things I can offer you. And I'm going to pull out a dead snake that is probably pretty rotted by now after the <laughs> uh, the fun house. And also, like, a <laughs> pair of those fairy wings that I hold up, like, pinch between fingers, like, disgusted because they're, you know, the fairy <laughs> wings. Ah, <laughs> I have some of these things. All right, well, look at it. Uh, these are shiny. That's not what we want. We want your rich stuff. Where's your gold, your your jewels? Uh, That's oh, what we want. Okay, okay, hold, hold on, hold on. Uh, I have uh, this thingy, huh? I pull out uh Two inch diameter glass orb. I can't remember what was used and wasn't wasn't used, but these are things I've listed that we found in those balloons in the in the playhouse in the yeah. <laughs> That doesn't look it's, it's kinda shiny. Uh and it'll come a little bit closer to you. What is it? It uh it's a magic orb. Magic? And I'll come a little bit closer. Look He's now ten feet away from you. When you look in do it, you See yourself. <gasps> what? And he will quickly... Are you holding it out? Yeah, I'll, I'll offer it to him. He will quickly run up, grab it, and run back. And he's just looking at it now. Okay, we can uh, go on our way now, no? No? Well, <laughs> that seems a little unfair. I will have to ask for that back. <laughs> no! He'll run a little farther away. That's as far as <laughs> All right, you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. Okay. Um, from behind the rock, you see a goblin. Mikkel, you see a goblin pop up and shoot an arrow at you. Uh, 23. That hits. And does a whole five points of damage to you, and then he ducks back down. Oh, Is that but the he... one within five foot of me? It was this one. Oh, okay. And Sorry. he is 15 foot away because you had to go around the rock. Um, but he he trips and falls and he stumbles down and rolls down the front of the rock till he is now five feet away from you. <laughs> Lands right next to you. Okay. So ah! let's see. It's now another goblin's turn. From the left, Jacques, you see an arrow fly out at you. Um, he's gotten better aim since the other one distracted you. A little bit, and he crits. Ooh. He does ten points of damage to you. Yikes. And he is gone. You cannot see where that arrow came from. Pam, it's your turn. Did Booch ever go? Oh, I feel like you didn't, did you? We I went. No. Sorry, I we skipped went you. Whole... Yeah. No, that's okay. I would have been like the bottom. Yeah, you were last, and I skipped you. I'm sorry. No, no worries. Go ahead, go, Booch. Okay. So Booch is going to take the dash action and dash right up next to Mikkel and adjacent to this goblin archer. Okay. And that's it. Pam. All right. I can see the guy that was uh, attacking Jacques, right? 
Like he retreated, but he's, I can see him. Yes, he's the one that has the orb. All right, the little punk. How did my drink become empty so quickly? <laughs> <laughs> it is like magic, isn't it? It is. I'm gonna use my hand crossbow and uh, shoot an arrow at him, 22 to hit. 22 hits him. And uh, that's 12 damage when you add the, when you add, oh, sorry. Did that add five for sneak attack and he doesn't have, sorry, seven damage. Still, you hit him right in the heart and he looks at you surprised and just thumps over and drops the glass orb, which rolls away. But it doesn't break. No, no, it doesn't break. Oh, it's, it's magical. Good shots at <laughs> Thank, I mean, yeah, you're welcome. I uh, truly would have been devastated to lose that orb. Oh, I was just trying to save our lives. Yeah, go get it, go get it. <laughs> Oh, jeez. From the tree comes an arrow, but it looks like it might have been aimed for Mikkel, but it actually goes flying off and hits the goblin archer next to Mikkel and Booch. Nice. Ooh. <laughs> These goblins suck. <laughs> <laughs> and the goblin in the tree falls out and hits the ground. <laughs> What a bunch of baboons. <laughs> the clumsiest <laughs> goblins. How you give the goblins a bad name, ah! You can now see this one falling out of the tree. <laughs> Look at him, he's so... yelling too. Look at his token. <laughs> <laughs> so the goblin archer <laughs> next to Booch takes uh, five points of damage. Jacques, do you know any of these guys? Are they your cousins? Uh, that is the little offense of the Pamela! I mean, okay, fine, whatever. And the one that fell out of the tree got hurt, also. Just thought maybe they'd want to come join us on our adventure. I do not think there is that kind of goblin. What is that supposed to be now? That's offensive. <laughs> you do not tell me what is offensive about goblins, huh? I think we've known each other long enough that you know what I'm saying. <laughs> what do you mean those goblins? <laughs> <laughs> From behind the rock steps another goblin. He's a little bigger. He has robes on. He's carrying a staff. Um, and he has paint on. Uh, yeah, his face is painted. He looks. He doesn't look as buffoonery, buffoonery as what the other ones. What kind of face paint? Paint? Like a tiger, a clown, a butterfly. <laughs> uh, white zigzags on butt cheeks. <laughs> oh, okay. Different face paint. Different kind of face paint. I'm, Pam's used to different face paint. <laughs> I need Mikkel and Booch to both give me dex saves. Huh. Seven. Eight. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, ten. Oh, I don't have enough d6s. Oh, wait, here's one. Oh, great. A stroke of lightning comes out of his fingers and zaps through Mikkel and into Booch. Whoa. Narrowly avoiding Pam. This is, oh, this is going to take me a minute. This is a lot to add up. Is that like a lightning bolt lightning bolt? Is that like the 100 Dang foot it. line of lightning? A lot to add up is not good. Yes. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> wow. Literally, Pam, you're five feet away from getting zapped like that, too. <laughs> uh, and I just just got my perm. I couldn't, I couldn't risk it. <laughs> all that ozone. <laughs> Making your hair all frizzy. For those that failed, which I believe was both at you, it's 27 points of lightning. Oh, yes. son of a... <laughs> Well, this is, uh, it's getting ridiculous now. These little things can't now, take us out. Now, I will say this <laughs> once and once only. Woof. <laughs> and he just stands there. He does that, and he's a little shocked himself at how well that came off, and he just stands there, and he doesn't try to hide. Booch, it's your turn. Can I move... Can I move up to the right of Mikkel uh, and still stay adjacent to this? You'll be on a rock. You would have to climb up that boulder. Okay. I'm willing to try. Give me an athletics or acrobatics. Uh, we'll go with athletics. Uh, 12. 12, you just managed to climb up. Your your shell's a little heavy. You almost fall back, but you catch yourself and you make it to the top of the boulder. Okay, awesome. I would like to use... So now I should be adjacent to this um, lightning bolt fella with the face paint. And I would like to use uh, shillelagh. So I will cast it on... Big boy, my my big cleaver. Okay. And then I will make an attack roll. 
That is a 24 to oh, hit. Oh, yeah, that hits him. And that is a 12 magical something damage. Um, he did not like that. He is looking very, very hurt. And he, he, he staggers a little bit, but he's still standing. Ow! Why'd you do that? Well, because you zapped me. I don't really appreciate it. But we, we just want your rich stuff. You just give us the rich stuff and then you can leave. But it's our rich stuff. No, we it's can't have ours it. now. No, it's not, little man. Mikhail, it's your turn. Uh, I'm going to use my bonus action to use second wind and roll, get some hit points. 12 additional hit points for me. Then I'm going to attack the one with the painted face. I'm going to turn away from the, the other one I was looking at, look back at the one that just hit me. And that's a 13 to hit. He dodges out of your way. Okay, and uh, second attack. <laughs> that's a 9. And while he was dodging from the first one, you bring your weapon around and he stumbles and man manages to... You just, just miss him with the second one. Okay. That's it for me. Man, that's terrible. I can't believe I missed twice. Yuck. Okay. I'll move up a little further. 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, I can move from 5 more feet. And I'm going to crack a whip out at the archer first because I have reach. Actually, no. I'm going to hit the guy that has been, hasn't been has been hit. The one that fell out of the tree first. Okay. A 23... Definitely gets him. Dang, that is only... Well, that's six slashing. Uh, that is just enough. You hit him, and you, the whip wraps around his neck, and it's just enough, and it, it cracks his neck, and he slumps. And then uh, I'll use my offhand with my bonus action on the other, because I have two weapon uh, fighting, so I can add my uh, modifier to the damage as well. And, whoa, that's another... Oh, that's actually a 22... Hits him. And I actually get to sneak attack this guy because he's adjacent to Booch. 11 slashing. And crack another neck and another one bites the dust. Nice. Uh, it pains me a little bit, um, but uh, these highway robbery people, they, uh, they must be dealt with. Pam. K Pam, give me a perception check. Uh, nine. <laughs> but my passive is 14. Okay, so... You hear a little noise next to you, and you turn just in time to see a different goblin grab that crystal orb and run off. <gasps> little prick. Chuck, he got your orb. Oh, <laughs> and Stop you, mom. He runs away. I'll try. About 50 feet away from you. It is now your turn, though. All right. So Pam sees that above her, everything's being dealt with, so she's going to run towards this goblin to get the orb back. 10, 20, 30, and shoot her hand crossbow at him, hoping to take it down in one blow like the last time. It's a 20, uh, just a 20 to hit. Yeah, it hits him. And then, yeah, it's only, uh, only four piercing. Four piercing, he stumbles, but he keeps running. Jacques, I didn't get him, I tried. Babala, that orb is worth more than anything I have I do not even recall where I picked it up, uh, truly, but <laughs> I know it's valuable. Sounds important, kind of. <laughs> the shaman goblin that is standing in front of Mikkel and next to Booch waves his arms. And he's casting a spell. Who? Uh, I need to know how many hit points you both have. 24. Total or remaining? T uh, remaining. Oh. If this requires an attack roll, I would like to use a portent to die. It does not. Dang it. He's casting sleep. Oh. No. <laughs> 15. So, uh, Booch, you had 12 hit points. You're now sleeping. What a jerk. <laughs> you were only down, you're down to 12. Holy crap. Yeah, dude. I had 39 to start Dang. with. I was down to 12 till I just <laughs> did my second wind. Okay, so then he is going to disengage and run. Get him, Mikkel, says Booch through his snoring. 
Booch, it is your turn. I wake up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you set an alarm. Perfect timing. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, it's one minute. You're unconscious for one minute. Or unless somebody wakes you up. Okay. Sounds good. Back to the top, Mikkel. I'm going to give chase. I uh, should be able to get right up to him. As he's running away, I'm going to try to stab him with my longsword. You're running and stabbing? <laughs> I'm running and then stabbing. Uh, that is a nine. It, wow. No, you, you miss. You stumble, and, and he nimbly escapes your slash. All right, and I'll get my second attack in before he nimbly escapes, hopefully. There we go, 23. You caught him with that one. But that's only seven His points head damage. goes flying. It's oh, enough. Geez. Okay, yeah, I definitely want to take his head Kids clean off. Are rolling. He's down. I want to pick his head up before I go back. Okay, you pick his head up. <laughs> Jock, what do you want to do? Uh, I think I'm going to... So can I see the little guy still running away with the orb? Yeah. He's 60 feet away from you. All right, he's getting magic missile. 10 force Excellent damage, choice. three darts. Pop, pip, pow! He goes flying forward and lands on the ground and is still, and the orb rolls out of his hand. Ha <laughs> ha! Yay, good job, Jacques. And I'll take my movement and just move closer to him. Do you say missile toe or mistletoe? Because I say magic missile and mistletoe. Yeah, missile. Mistletoe. Missile. Why do you say magic missile? Did I say missile? Yeah. You did. That was for dramatic effect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I normally would say missile, though. That was weird that I said missile. I didn't yeah. realize I said missile. <laughs> <laughs> Twice. <laughs> so you, you don't hear anything else. Everything's gone quiet. The birds are chirping again. It's not quiet. Booch is snoring. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I was going nice. to walk back. Can't you hear it? To where Booch is and sort of, you know, shake oh, him a little Booch, bit. Oh, you and... were on a boulder when you got sleeped. Yeah, you was. <laughs> I think you fell off that boulder. <laughs> And woke up. Sure. But he landed on his shell. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his spore babies got crushed. But... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, not he's, funny. He's not happy. <laughs> not a man. Ah, would you look so peaceful as in there, huh? Now, will we Whoa. have to help him get back up, or can he get off his shell? Like, <laughs> yeah, how we have to roll is... him over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I once knew a, uh, a, 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 a turtle who truly was a dragonborn, but his show, it was much more effective than yours, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, on the count of three, we'll flip him over, ready? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't be silly. Old Booch can write himself no problem. Are you sure? Like, I want to watch. Ready? Try. Sure, you can watch. Oh. And he does all, he swings his legs back and forth, back and forth, and then swings his arms, does a little bit of a spin, and rolls over, writes himself. You don't have to roll a die for that at all? Jeez. Nope. Lame. He's been practicing this his whole life. <laughs> <laughs> I'll retrieve my orb. I'm going to give the goblin head to Booch. I got him. Here. Oh. Oh, my. <laughs> per your request. That lightning was no joke, you guys. It sure wasn't. Uh, that was a powerful little blast coming from this fella. Now, Mikkel, uh, Mikkel I appreciate the gesture, but... Uh, You're welcome. Uh, okay. <laughs> Do you guys need healing? I am a bit worse for the wear. You've only been traveling for a couple days. You know you still have a couple days travel to get to Bad and Fithage. Uh... What have we? Is this towards the end of the day, beginning of the day, when this encounter took place? Midday. I can hold my own so long as we don't run into another pack of these little troublemakers. Agreed. All right, don't say I didn't ask. Well, if you want to heal, I'll gladly accept. Of course, I want to heal. I need to take care of my kids. 
then, uh, yes. My wounds are not bleeding anymore, but still painful. Uh, yeah, Miguel, I can see the ball in the... <laughs> Where? <laughs> well, there is one there, and uh, sticking out of that head, uh, there's some over oh, there. Yes. <laughs> um, Mikel gets six hit points. Kind of a terrible roll. What about Booch? Okay. Come on. And then Booch gets... Huck a brother up. Booch gets six, too. Ah, so fair. Such a good mama. Zapamala. <laughs> Jacques. Jacques, you need healing, no, too? No, 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 no. I am okay. Okay, me too. Yeah. All right, kids. Anyone need a sandwich? Ah, that I will take. Yeah, here. I got a sandwich. Here you go. <laughs> I would never turn down a sandwich. What kind of sandwich? I just start frisbeeing sandwiches out of my bag to everyone. Ah, <laughs> ham and cheese on the baguette. It's my favorite. You know me, Babala. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, before we left, I grabbed a baguette. I know you love baguettes. <laughs> Braun swagger and onion. Mm. <laughs> I don't think I made that. I think you're wrong. Where did you find that? <laughs> it was on the ground. Uh, yeah, that's a goblin sandwich. Are you okay? Delicious. If you get traveler's diarrhea, it's not my fault. <laughs> okay, you travel for another couple of days. Ah, Mikkel had his shots before we left to the worry, Pamela. The trees open up and the landscape changes to farmland. You see a small village surrounded by the fields. It's now early evening and you don't see anyone anywhere. The road you're on takes you to the center of the village where you see several houses, a small chapel, and the Broken Thorn Inn. There are lights on inside the inn and you can smell food cooking, but you don't hear the usual lively chatter you expect from an inn. Hmm. So this is Bad and Fithage. This is Bad and Fithage. Why does Bad and Fithich seem like a cologne name or something? Like, <laughs> or like a law office. <laughs> it's really, it does sound like a law firm, doesn't it? Because it's like three names, right? Like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like a. It's like, who's your dress by, honey? Oh, Bad and Fithich. <laughs> I'm wearing Bad and Fithich. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you give me an intelligence check? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I want to do that. Not it. Oh. Shaka, not it. <laughs> Uh, Booch, that's you. <laughs> um, 15. B Booch, you know bad and fifth, it means something along the lines of Knoll of the Ravens. Hmm. Okay. Makes zero sense, but we'll go with it. So you walk into town, you see houses, you see farmland, you see a small chapel, and you see an inn. Let's go to the inn. I'm hungry. I would like another sandwich. Yeah, we need to get you another. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> we ran out of bacon two days ago, huh? <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, I'll stock up. You walk into a well-lit and warm room that is about 20 foot wide by 40 foot long, or 6 by 12 meters for our European friends. There are a few tables scattered around the room. A large fireplace is putting out heat and light to your right. There is a wide, U-shaped bar at the back of the room. You can smell the crackling wood, some kind of meat cooking, and stale ale that has been spilled over many years. An older, rough-looking human woman, dressed in leather and wearing a cloak, sits at the long table by the fire. Two other women, a dwarf and a half-elf, are behind the bar. The half-elf calls out to you. Greetings, adventurers! The dwarf looks up from cleaning mugs and silently shakes her head. The half-elf gently nudges her and then turns back to y'all. I am Davina, she says, gesturing to herself. And this grump is my wife, Iona. How can we be of assistance? I smell some kind of meat that's my favorite kind. The dwarf says, yes, well, she puts on a fake smile. Room and board are free for those hunting the wolf. We'll let Fergus know you'll meet him here in the morning and can show you around and tell you more. Stay inside at night. The wolf always appears if anyone is outside when it's dark. Ah, uh, is that the Rouge Wolf, huh? 
The Red Wolf, yes. Uh, we've had very few visitors since its arrival. Look, we met a very dear friend uh, just on his deathbed, but we grew to love him like he was one of our own. But uh, he came from here and told us about your town and the problems here, huh? Yes, we've had many adventurers come try to slay the wolf. But sadly, everyone has died. So business is bad, huh? <laughs> yes. From outside, you hear a horrible keening. You come to hunt the wolf, but you will fall like the others before you. You hear a chuckle from the woman sitting near the fire. <laughs> that voice you heard is the Banshee, a terrible specter that haunts this village with eerily accurate predictions of death. Ah, oh, this Banshee, she sees the future. Ah, oh, I uh, can see a few things myself. What do you see, little man? Well, I see events unfolding on a roll of a five or a twenty for today. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. I am confused as well, but <laughs> as the visions they come, I must interpret them in the moment. Whose are you, huh? I'm Lyle. Lyle, are you an adventurer too? Are you hunting with us? Let's go together. I'm not going to hunt that wolf. Why not? I'll tell you what I know about it. It's appeared before. Long ago. Those that have seen it say it's massive. With fur the color of fresh blood. The first time it appeared was just after the village was founded. It was driven off many times, but it always returns. A group of hunters decided they would go and kill it. Story is, the innkeeper's daughter, Greer, tried to convince them not to go. But they wouldn't listen to her, and they were never seen again. Greer eventually went after the wolf herself, also to never return. But at least the wolf disappeared for many years after that. The stupid villagers... <laughs> They dug a grave for her, though her body was never found. Now there's a cairn built over nothing, but a, in a monument raised in her memory. I think it reads something like... And she kind of looks up in, to the ceiling. Those we lost to the wolf's fell bite. A hope that soon no more will fall. And she raises her mug and a mocking toast, takes a long drink, and turns away from you. Leave me alone. I have no more to say to those going to their deaths. Wow. Okay, so, uh, no, you won't be hunting with us. That's okay. Um, all right. Did you hear that? It sounds like they've spotted a very elusive and hard-to-find red-breasted wolf. <laughs> I've heard of them before. Don't I wish I had excited. brought my binoculars and my... Wolfing book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Booch, you know we're gonna kill him, right? We 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 wish you the best of luck, don't we, Iona? Uh, yeah, whatever. Listen, listen, listen. We're we're gonna take care of this problem for you. Davina brings out some plates of food and some ale. Well, you you all eat up, like like Iona said. Room and boards on the house for those that are going to go after the. Well, if it's, it's the least we could do. Going to go catch a sight of the wolf. Booch. Yes, what? once we kill it, you can look at its breast. Yeah. <laughs> also, don't act like you're serving us our last meal. We're going to do it. We'll be back. You'll see. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. It's just there have been so many. But none like us. I suppose that's true. Have you found their bodies after they went on the search, or did they just disappear? We... we have found many bodies. They are in the graveyard. And their demise was met by what? Sc is it bites? Scratches? Oh, well, I mean, I, I don't want to scare you away, but they, uh, it was kind of hard to tell. They were pretty torn up. Really, there wasn't much left to bury. Doesn't sound like a red-breasted wolf. 
Huh. I was gonna say, maybe the wolf's hungry and we just need to bring it some sandwiches. How many baguettes you got? Uh, I don't know what a baguette is. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sacre bleu! We must leave this place at once! <laughs> I have bread and stew. Can you make it really long and pointy? I could try. <sighs> okay, so that is all I ask that you try, huh? Now, I see you have a <laughs> piano in the corner. Can I uh, tickle the ivories a little bit? Yes, please. Help yourself. And lighten up the mood in here, huh? Happy for some entertainment. Hey, right, Jack, of course, sit, sit the, he's, he tries to play his best rendition of Piano Man. <laughs> 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 I, I'll sit down and eat and, and hold back a tear when I'm listening to the Piano Man being played as some... Yeah. You know, maybe maybe not hitting all the notes correctly, but enough to. <laughs> and to he's make singing me swell in French, so bit. we don't understand, but we try. <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, wolf is not eating the people. That seems strange, no? Oh, I mean, like I said, there were pieces left, so there were pieces missing. Ah, so it's waste food. But, uh, there are many people in this world that go without, huh? and it wastes the scraps. Even the scraps. Really, that is the least of our concerns. Nothing worse than a wasteful wolf. Uh, nothing worse than a wolf that is killing everybody in sight. Uh, okay, so does it, like, snatch people in the night, or what's the deal with the nighttime? If anybody goes out after dark, it attacks. That's all we know. Okay, so, like, we could set a trap, guys. I wouldn't. It's, it's getting dark now. I wouldn't recommend going outside. Well, yeah, not tonight. Well, I, like like I said before, you know, Fergus, he'd be happy to show you in the morning where the wolf attack last happened. And was that one because people were out at night? Well, it was the last set of adventures that went looking for it. And they went out at night, even though you told them? No, they, well, they left and then never came back and... A few days later, we went looking for them, so I don't know if they were out at night. Well, I mean, I assume they were, but could have attacked during the day. I don't know. Uh, I'm tired. Davina, do you have any sleepy tea? I'd be happy to get some tea for you. And Thanks, honey. And she'll bring you a big steaming mug. Oh, feels good. Thank you. All right, kids. Anyone need extra blankets? I brought some with me. <laughs> yes, I would like an extra blanket. I get cold at night. Okay, I'll tuck you in, Mikkel. Just, all right. They'll show us to our rooms, right? Yeah, there's a few free rooms upstairs. You take whichever ones you want. Okay, who wants a bedtime story? I would like a bedtime story. Okay, I can make it happen. <laughs> Have you heard of Little Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf? No, please do tell. <laughs> <laughs> or I know one about three pigs and a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> you know a lot about wolves, huh? Pamela! <laughs> I hope this uh, Red Riding Hood and the pigs they get out alive, huh? Oh, you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> I curl up in anticipation of the story, put the extra blanket on, and get ready for a good night's sleep. Tell me more of Red Breasted Riding Hood. <laughs> <laughs> 